Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing preventive health measures. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. And we still have Dr. Nesochi with us. You see, you had a question for her. Yes. Um, hi, Dr. Nesochi. Um, we have individuals who say that they take a lot of supplements to, you know, keep the body... Uh, afloat. So what role does um, supplement play in preventive health measures? So health supplements or vitamin supplements, those are good if you have certain deficiencies in certain vitamins. So let's say you have a vitamin D deficiency, then obviously you'd want to supplement that. But supplements alone are not what is necessary to fully keep you healthy we have to really implement these preventive screening strategies throughout the various decades of our lives. If you are somebody though, who in general is adhering to a well-rounded, healthy diet, typically you should be getting most of the nutrients your body needs. But let's say you are optimized with eating the best foods and you take care of yourself and you eat well and you're um, dieting, uh, or following a, a good, well-rounded diet and exercising all the time, you still need to stick with these screening measures at every single stage of your life. So as we were talking about, for women starting at the age, in their 20s, starting at the age of 21, they should really initiate those routine pap smears with their uh, GYN, okay? Um, also, as women progress from 20s to 30s, there's another marker or time frame at which we should start implementing another screening tool, mammography, mammograms. Starting at the age of 40, really, women should be having these annual mammograms to screen for a potential breast cancer. These are important things that not everyone is actually doing. Okay, And even in the 20s, though, clinical breast exams are beneficial as well. But just to recap, your pap smears, should start at age 21, every three to five years or so. Starting at the age of 40, you should have that discussion with your doctor about screening for breast cancer, or depending on what your family history looks like, it might have to be done at an earlier age. And moving forward, there are other um, measures that need to be taken for, taken for both men and women. If we switch to the um, other end of things for men, starting in the 20s in that earlier age, Another screening that's important is just screening for testicular cancer. Men should be having testicular checks to make sure that there are no abnormalities that put them at potential risk for certain cancers. This is not happening all the time. So that's why I need to just reinforce the importance of establishing care with um, a primary care doctor who is going to kind of screen you for these certain things that need to be done at various stages of your life. Hi, Dr. Nesochi. Um, for me, um, is there a particular age a person needs to be before they can take um, a blood pressure test? Um, no, if you are in your um, adult years, even as a child, when you go into um, your doctor's office, they should, they should be checking your blood pressure. But we start screening uh, around the age of 18 plus in your 20s. So just a simple uh, blood pressure reading will let you know a typical normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. That top number, the systolic number, you want it usually less than 120, the bottom number over 80. So in your adult years, if you're somebody in your 20s, 30s, 40s, let's just put it this way. If you are an adult that has never had your blood pressure checked, this is the time to get it done today. Why is it so important to screen and make sure that your blood pressure is within a normal range? Okay. Because elevations in blood pressure on a consistent basis basically puts you at risk for stroke in the future, puts you at risk for potential heart disease and heart attacks. These are things that you do not want to deal with at any point in your life. So these screening tools need to be done very early on. Okay, Dr. Nesochi, I, I'm so glad you talked about um, men's health earlier on. And um, in terms of that aspect, what you talked about um, testicular screening. Is testicular screening the same thing as prostate cancer? 
and uh, cancer screening, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. prostate yeah. cancer screening. And secondly, when is the right age for men to go for prostate cancer screening? The right age. Okay. So prostate, um, when we're talking about the prostate mm -hmm. and the testicles, those are different areas of the male anatomy. So these are two different screenings we're talking about, okay? Yeah. The testicular cancer screening is basically checking the scrotum and feeling and checking to see if there are any evidence of abnormalities, lumps and bumps in the testicular region. The prostate is another um, region of the male anatomy that is um, a gland actually. And that screening for men typically begins around the age of 50. However, if you do have a family history mm -hmm. of prostate yeah. cancer, then you would want to get that checked out earlier on so that you don't have issues with that moving forward in the future. Okay, in regards to these certain age ranges and timelines exactly. of when you want to check these things, it's a great discussion that you should have with your doctor. So during any physical, I'll just break it down with you, what I do with my patients. We go through, if you're a new patient of mine, we go through your family history, your medical history. We determine, based on your age, what the appropriate uh, screening measures and things that we need to get done at that point in your life uh, needs to actually B. This is what every doctor really should be doing during your annual physical to let you know what is pending at what time um, you should time frame you should be getting certain um, tests done. Another one that I think another testing or screening measure that I think slips through the uh, cracks a lot. And I think this is key, especially um, in Nigeria as well, and just for blacks in general, is colon cancer screening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are finding that more people are um, falling ill with uh, colon cancer, colorectal cancer at earlier and earlier ages in their uh, life, especially for blacks. Typically, the, screen, the time to start screening for col colon cancer, usually it is around the age of 50 years of age. But with blacks we're seeing now, it should be at an earlier age, around the age of 45. However, if you do have um, a family member who, a first degree family member who has had a colorectal cancer, that screening needs to be done much earlier. So if you have a first degree family me member, let's say mom, dad, or a sibling who, let's say, had a colon cancer diagnosed at the age of 40, then you should be screened 10 years prior okay, so to that at the age of 30. Can I throw in a question here? Because um, I'm... Uh, um, this is a bit because um, um, when you brought up uh, brought about colon cancer, I I I, mm. I I I wanted to ask a question. It's a bit a controversial question because young people these days, I mean, children of 18, 16, they've started alter altering their bodies. Mm. So you get you get young mm. girls going to doctors, doing surgical augmentations, you know, breast um, bomb. You know, um, a video mm. went viral of someone having anal sex, you know. And we know some of these things, you know, have re very, very strong, um, what's it called, impact on the health, you know. I mean, I can't imagine what, what it will do to the life of that person, you know, yeah. anal sex and all of that. Mm. So, I mean, you might not have a history, but maybe perhaps the lifestyle that you have chosen, you know, might also bring about certain kinds of things. So... Perhaps you want to touch on those kinds of unhealthy lifestyle that some of us have chosen, right? Maybe smoking, um, going abuse. into drugs, you know, and all of those things. If this is our lifestyle that we have chosen, we're on drugs, we're taking um, hardcore drugs, and we're taking alcohol, you know, participating in all kinds of um, explicit sex, how should we handle health checks? Hmm. So, okay, so if you are somebody that's actually engaging in these kind of high risk sexual behaviors, this basically comes back to what I was saying during those annual checks with your doctor, some of the blood work that needs to be done. You need to have a sexual transmitted infection screening. Yeah. What does that mean? You know that you're at high risk. You know that you're engaging in uh, these risky behaviors. You cannot just continue to go about having sexual intercourse or any kind of um, sexual contact without being screened 
for various illnesses such as HIV, no, Dr. Nisbet, uh, I chlamydia, understand that part. gonorrhea, I'm talking about, I'm talking syphilis. about specifically anal sex specifically not just not just saying sexually transmitted diseases are there no health implications you know because <laughs> that's that's the that's the question yeah so if it is anal sex you're specifically talking about there yeah. obviously are health risks but with that said you still need to get the infection of the uh, sti check because mm -hmm. some of those illnesses can be transmitted through anal sex so you still need to get a STI check, mm -hmm. needless to say, and have the discussion with your doctor about what exactly these high-risk behaviors are. But I think we need to really look at the full picture because irrespective of these high-risk behaviors, if you are actually getting checked and screened for these sexually transmitted infections, there are other things that you really should not let slip through the cracks um, from the age of 20 to the age of 30 to the age of 40 to the age of 50. 50. And my fear is that this is not something that is actually really adhered to in Nigeria throughout all of these uh, stages and decades in one's life. And then actually you did mention something else about the uh, smoking issue as well. If you are somebody that started uh, smoking at a young age, there are implications that as well and these are discussions that you need to have with your doctor to determine the strategies realistic strategies to try to help you quit sooner than later okay because the bottom line is when you do not have any of these um screenings in place if various diseases are caught at a later stage let's say we're talking about a prostate cancer let's say we're talking about a testicular cancer let's say we're talking mm -hmm. about a breast cancer if these are not um, actually detected earlier, it is so much harder to treat. Mm. And I have had patients who have been uh, diagnosed with some of these very severe illnesses much later, uh, at much later stages of the disease. And unfortunately, we are not able to really uh, fully treat them and have them recover and they, and they, they die as a result of this okay. not being so we have some, early we have some sms questions and comments sure. let's take sorry dr nesochi let's take it so right. in, in case you go ahead okay please. okay we have a comment oh. from taiwo ohimbo i hope i pronounced that right yeah he said um it is dangerous to use good body stature to judge wellness <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> many sudden deaths has been ascribed to witches and wizards <laughs> Whereas they were caused by undetected high blood pressure, mm -hmm. BP is a silent killer with no regards for slim or fat body stature. So mm -hmm. it is best to monitor it as long as you are over 20. Early detection usually saves the day. All right. Okay. And this is from Celestine Uguanyi. I'm sorry if I, I messed up your name. From Oweri, Imo State. He says, I think poverty in Africa is the main reason why people don't pay attention to preventive health. People should always, uh, people usually fall sick before going to the hospital. Only those who can afford it can go for serial checkups. He wrote the checkup, the up in capital, capital letters. letters. <laughs> <laughs> serial medical, medical um, checkups. My question, to, doctor, to the doctor is how often should the different age ranges go for medical checkups and why? Uh, I think doctor has said... No, 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 let her quickly but, just um, say. You can throw more so, light I mean, on I'm going to address two of the points here. The first point that was made from the first viewer in regards to witches and wizards somehow taking over the body, I think that, that's something that needs to really be uh, debunked. That, that that kind of notion that somehow some kind of external wizard power can take over the body to make one ill. There are physiological processes going on through all of our bodies and those things are constantly being regulated. When those things go off kilter, one can fall ill. 
Okay, so there shouldn't be any thoughts about sorcery or witches or wizards. I think that's what the guest, the guy, that's yeah. what Taiwo is saying. Yeah. Of anyone. I and think that's what Taiwo is saying, Dr. Nesochi. He's saying that we should stop attributing our illnesses to witches, witches and wizards wizard. when we should have just gone for a checkup. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So to buttress that, po to buttress that point, yeah. those checkups should really begin in your 20s mm. you should really be having a physical examination with your doctor annually you okay. should not be waiting so dr nesochi are you answering you... um uh, what's his name what's his question celestine's question that says how often is you are you saying we should go for checkups annually from 20s from our 20s you should really go for a physical a full checkup annually that way the doctor can make sure that everything really is pretty much in check that's why it is a, a check up okay the in regards to the uh, screenings that i was talking about there it depends on what goes on with the um initial screening for um whatever system we are actually talking about but keeping it consistent keeping it routine that is the key the bottom line is if you at least have that initial evaluation with your doctor, they can come up with a good plan of action for you, a care plan on how Absolutely. you can move forward. Thank you. Intervals of Thank these checkups. Because if something is found earlier, then you may have to be coming in more Absolutely. frequently than spacing it out longer. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Nesuchi. It's always when we have you, we never have enough time with you. But we'll Are definitely... Are we out of time already? Yeah, we had out of time! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. So, All right. we'll, definitely, we'll definitely hope to have you back again. <laughs> You know, you are our person, so you're our in-house, you know, medical doctor. Exactly. So I hope you come back again <laughs> so we can throw more light on this topic. Thank you so much, Dr. Nishochi. <laughs> Thank you for having me, as always. Thank Please you. stay Thank safe you. and take care of yourself. And you too, you Dr. Too. Nishochi. Bye, bye. Thank right, you. Ladies, we have like one minute each, quickly. <laughs> okay. So, um, Isi, quickly, one minute. Okay. One minute. First things first, the, the aspect of us taking our health seriously cannot be overemphasized. And we should take preventive measures seriously yeah. because it's primarily Absolutely. important. How about you, For me, um, once you're 20, you should start doing your checkup. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should focus on what the outcome should be. You mm -hmm. should mostly focus on having a good, health, healthy life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like absolutely. That. Yeah. Then I, would, I think I want to wrap up with uh, what Chisholm, Chisholm sent a comment. She said, health is wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, we keep saying this thing. It's, it's like we a... Don't but you don't You don't understand it until you are lying in the hospital yes, bed. And you now know that truly health is wealth. Yes. And if for anything, coronavirus has taught us that health is wealth. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it wasn't about... Uh, it wasn't about the millions that a lot of people had. Yeah. If their money could save them, they, they would, would have still, they would have alive. still been survived. alive right yes. now. Yeah. Right, so guys, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Nesuchi and the ladies. Thank, Thank you. you for doing this with Thank me. You. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa 1 or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's actually a proverb. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. cure. It's very simple and very short. Prevention is We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. <laughs> bye. Bye.